Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial we're going to take some hand lettering, some lettering drawn by hand that's been scanned in and we're going to vectorize it in Illustrator. And the reason we want to vectorize it is once it is vectorized we can scale this. So you can see I can make it big, I can make it small, I can digitally edit it, I can tweak all the forms of the letter. Um, without compromising resolution ever, which I can't really do when I have a scan. Um, it gets the edges get a little funky when you enlarge too much, and plus it gets a little fuzzy. And we want things to be crisp and clean. And you can see if I hit Command Y on my keyboard, this is just showing outline mode. You can see it. these are shapes now, um, which you can alter in Illustrator just as you would any other shape. Whereas when you have a scan, you just have a big image. So we do not want that. So this tutorial will cover um, once you have your image scanned in, um, we will increase the contrast in Photoshop so we can get the edges as crisp as possible. And then we'll tweak our edges um, to make it look as much like the original as possible in Illustrator. So we'll get started in Photoshop. So I've got my scan right here. Um, and if you want, like if you have any kind of rough edges in here, like you can kind of see the V right here is breaking down a little bit. If I just want to fill that in with a little bit of color, I can just hit S on my keyboard. And of course I can come up here and change my settings. I kind of want it hard because um, this is going to be a hard edge. I don't want it too soft. Um, and my size is pretty good. So with the rubber stamp tool, I'm just going to hit Alt, which um, I'm choosing where my stamp is going to derive from. So if I just click up there, um, when I stamp down here, it's pulling from that area up there. That wasn't a very good stamp. Okay. All right. So that's a little better. So you can go around um, your scan and kind of improve all those little flaws that you might see a little clearer once you have the scan in. Um, okay. So we're going to increase the contrast on this. And everyone's got their own way of doing it. This is my own little crafted way of doing it so don't judge too hard but it works every time so I'm standing by it um, so I come over here in the adjustments panel and if you do not see this panel you can get to it by going window adjustments and I'm just gonna grab the brightness contrast and click that and now it creates a layer right here for me and I'm gonna increase the contrast all the way to 100 you can already see it's beginning to stand out a lot more kind of the rough paper texture is fading away and the the black is coming forward and that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to just darken it just a little bit. Um, maybe 25 is pretty good. Um, you can see the, the background starting to come forward again. So we need another one of these layers. But instead of hitting this and doing the same thing over again, we can actually with this layer selected, hold Alt and kind of drag down. And now I've got two. And if I want to alter this just a little bit, I can just double click on the symbol and say I don't want so much brightness or so much darkness. Um, so I can kind of even it out. So you can do your adjustments still. Um, it's just a quick way of repeating that. That's looking pretty good. Maybe I'll do one more. That's too much. Um, so I'm just going to scrap that. All right. So once you're happy with the contrast level, um, what I need to do is merge all of these layers together and then copy and paste it into Illustrator. But if I ever want to come back here and adjust any of these settings, I still kind of want to have them. Once I merge them, I won't have them anymore. So this is a way around that. So I'm going to group all these together. So with either the bottom or the top layer selected, hold shift and then hit the opposite end. And now that all these are selected, I'm going to hit command G on my Mac or control G on a PC. And now they're grouped together. Um, so that's, great having one group but I need two groups one that can be editable and one that I can merge together so in order to create another group I'm just going to do the same thing I did with that adjustment layer I'm going to hold alt and just drag it down now I have two groups of the same thing so I'm going to turn off this um, kind of reserve copy if I ever need to edit it and this one is the one I'm going to merge so I'm going to right click on the layer and click merge group now I've got it all in one layer and now I need to copy this whole layer. So in order to do that, I'm going to hit Command A to select everything or Control A on a PC and then Command C to copy or Control C to copy on a PC. And then I'm going to jump on over to Illustrator and right here I'm going to paste it in by hitting Command V or Control V on a PC. And if I zoom in really close, you can see 
that's what we had in Photoshop. Okay, so now in order to vectorize this, we're going to hit Image Trace. Image Trace has a really bad name because a lot of people just use it for the default. They'll just click it and go with it. That's really bad because it just grabs, it's like lowest common denominator. It just searches for edges and you get this really finagled, really crappy looking vector. And that is not what we want, especially for type. So we need to edit these settings, which a lot of people don't know they can do, but we can do it. So I'm just gonna click this little panel right here, image trace panel, and this opens up some settings for me. So now I can adjust the threshold, which I like to use quite a bit. And you can kind of see it, the more I move it, let me move it a little more drastically. You can see um, you do have a little bit of control here. And the other nice tool is um, you've got a whole list of things that you can choose from and you kind of get a different result every time. You just kind of have to play around with it depending on the type of artwork that you have. I think when I did mine, I came with high fidelity photo and I just brought it down to one color, which actually let me make sure I do have one color. Um, actually, we want black and white. Okay, so it's not terrible, but it still needs quite a bit of help. You can see this edge is really awful. The E is terrible. <laughs> this is really pointy. We don't want that. So it's still going to need some customization. Um, which is good because we can do all those things in Illustrator. So once you're happy with this, we're going to click expand up here. So this kind of separates everything um, because it was just still one big blob and now we have pieces, but they're still grouped together. So we need to ungroup those pieces. So I'm going to hit command shift G and let's see, sometimes you have to do it twice. Yep. Command shift G or control shift G if you're on a PC. All right. So now this, paper um, it's kind of an off-white you can't really tell because it's on off-white um, but this is still a shape here and you can go back to outline mode command y or control y you can still see it's surrounded by the shape so i'm just going to select the shape and delete it all right so another thing that happens is when you have um, counters like this that are filled in um, you want to make sure that these are separated right now they're separate pieces and if i just delete that it goes away and i i still want that hole in the a so i'm going to hit command z to undo that and the way that we can fix this this is the way that i usually do it is i select everything and i'm just going to choose a random color to color the whole thing so now you can see those are filled in and then i'm going to come over to my pathfinder tool over here and if you don't see it you can get to it by going window pathfinder You'll get the same thing and I'm just going to hit this divide button right here and then I have to ungroup it again. Whenever you do a pathfinder it groups all of your objects together. So I'm going to hit command shift G or control shift G on a PC and now when I select these and delete them, I'm just hitting delete after I select them. Now we have real holes in there so if I put a color behind this whole thing, let me choose a color. You can see they're empty. They're not filled with anything. So that's exactly what we want. All right. So our first of all, I'm going to straighten this and I'm going to straighten it by turning on my rulers. I'm just hitting command R or control R on a PC. And I'm just going to all you have to do to drag a guideline is click in your rulers and drag down. So I'm going to click in this top ruler, drag down, and I'm just going to um, make this a little less cockeyed. All right, and then to reset my bounding box so it's not at an angle, I'm just going to right click, transform, reset bounding box. All right, so now we've got, we're getting there. All right, so this is where I break out my Wacom. Um, I'll put a link in the video's description of the type of Wacom I use. It's kind of small, but it, it, does, it does its job, and um, I really like it, so I'm keeping it around. Um, so now we're going to click on our type. And I'm going to grab my pencil tool, which is um, the keyboard shortcut N. So I'm just going to hit N on my keyboard. And I can come in here. I've got my Wacom going right now with my stylus. And I can kind of clean these edges up. And this is um, either extremely tedious or very therapeutic. So I guess it all depends on um, your level of patience for this kind of thing. So you can spend a lot of time um, fix 
mixing this up. I'm just going to kind of cruise right along here. Let's see. This was a really bad edge. Kind of match what we had going on over there and make this transition a little crisper. Oh, so what I did, um, so obviously these ones are separated from this part, so right now they're two separate shapes. Um, so I just clicked on it and then I hit N again to go back to my pencil. And now when you do the inside, um, in order to get back to the outside, you just need to select the whole thing again and then hit N. Consider those different shapes. Oh, something um, I learned when I first started hand lettering, which I found really helpful that no one really told me. Um, when you're drawing out type, and if you want this kind of fake calligraphy look, um, you can make the downstrokes the thick ones. So only the parts where you're like coming around and coming down, those are the parts where you want to thicken it up and it'll look more like calligraphy then. All right. So this tutorial doesn't last forever. I'm just going to pretend like this is done even though it's totally not. Um, I'm group the whole thing together because remember we got this piece and this piece which are separate. So I'm just going to select everything, Command G or Control G. And now I've got my type. Um, so if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new tutorial or freebie over on my blog every-tuesday.com every Tuesday. Um, so thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.